Assalamu alaikum. As we continue with the series on Al Mahdi, we have a lighter segment today. Inshallah, we will cover just one surah and just one corroborating paragraph from another surah. The surah that we will cover today, inshallah, is Surah At Tariq, surah number 86. And as we will see, it fits very beautifully in the topics that we've covered so far in this series. And with this, we start. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي So this topic that we're covering today relates to something called the pathfinder الطارق as we will see We will discuss this in full detail We will give the linguistic evidence for it We will also dive in the beautiful concepts that are laid out in the surah, surah number 86, as I mentioned, surah at tariq We will also get into a corroboration from surah al nahl surah number 16. There's a paragraph that fits beautifully and confirms everything that we're talking about in this surah. Just a few reminders, please be patient. Don't assume that you already know what these ayat mean. They've been misinterpreted in the past, yes because we follow the organic Quranic methodology, which gives us a totally different interpretation. The nested interpretations that we will use, as you will see, allow us to understand more about the Quran. We use the Abrahamic locution, which is the basic divine lexicon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used throughout the Quran. We will make use of tafsil, divarication, and we will use exclusively the organic Quranic methodology. We're not going to refer to other outside sources in order to understand the Quran. The Quran is enough to explain itself, as we will see, inshallah. So if you're not familiar with how we engage the Quran, this segment will cause you frustration. And the rest of the series will cause you frustration. So I highly advise you to watch prior segments, especially the series on the methodology, and especially YT93. It's a very important segment before you can appreciate anything else in this channel or in this series, YT93 is really important. So please follow the instructions and don't waste your time and our time with comments and complaints that don't make sense. Everything we say is based on a solid methodology and therefore you need to understand what that methodology is before you understand why we make the claims we make or why we reach the conclusions that we reach. Finally, this segment reinforces knowledge that was provided in the prior segments in plural, especially the series about Isa ibn Maryam. So please refer back to the channel page and you will find eight segments about Isa ibn Maryam, very detailed, very explicit, a lot of information, very solid references and evidence, and it helps you a lot to understand your deen and the Quran. We start with Surah At-Tariq, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Was-Sama'i wa tariq an oath by the abstract layer of understanding, as sama and by the pathfinder, At-Tariq, we're going to see why, who commits to the prescribed method. By the way, the notes file that I use in every segment are available on our website. Our website is www.marvelousquran.org. You can become a member and you can subscribe. Once you subscribe, you'll have access to the notes. And depending on what type of subscription you can choose, you may have free access to these notes. So please take advantage of this offer and visit us and support this project as much as you can. And while you're at it, if you're not subscribed, we really appreciate it if you subscribe and you click that red bell button on the channel page. It helps us spread this ilm to as many people as possible. And finally, like and a comment would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. So the word as-sama, we've talked about it before. It's the abstract layer of understanding or the abstract understanding above the text. So the idea is that the ard or the text of the Quran itself is dry, is just text, it's just words and characters and expressions and sentences and so on and so forth. But when you rise above it to try to understand, you start gathering abstract understanding. This concept of abstract understanding is as sama, as sama, the higher layer, the higher level of understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath or swearing. We say swearing, but it's not appropriate 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he doesn't need to swear. But he's telling us that this is something very significant. So the oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes is to give us this confirmation that this concept in here, as sama is something very important. If you don't understand it, don't skip it. Don't pass over it. Stop until you really understand it. The same thing, tariq and the pathfinder. Why do we say the pathfinder? We go down to the notes at the bottom of this file, and we have several notes about this word. I want to stop and take our time and really analyze this word because it's really critical. First, let's recognize that in various interpretations, tafsir and translations, this word tariq, tariq has been interpreted as the nighttime visitor, the person who comes visiting at night. And they refer to this concept of the person coming in the middle of the night to visit somebody camping or somebody in a, in a tent or in a house, and they knock some rocks. They knock some rocks. And by knocking these rocks, he becomes tariq because he comes in the middle of the night to let the people know that there's some visitor. And it is the obligation of the homeowner or the tent owner or the host to receive them, to accept them, to allow them in, to take them in and to host them for a night or two, to let them rest and so on and so forth. And such was the beautiful habits of the Arabs. Wonderful, great, but I don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that. Allah did not use that word or the root for that word, which is taraqa, the root, the root taraqa right here, taraqa, never in the Quran it's used that way. This is a very peculiar language of the Bedouin Sahara dwellers, the Arabs, so to speak, of the desert. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to refer to that. They understood it from their own perspective, from their own world-centric type of perspective. But this is not necessarily the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using it. So we refer to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used that root for. And every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used that root or any word de derived from that root, it is referring to the path or the method, the path of the, or the method. So refer to Ayah 72, 16, just as an example. And you can do your homework. So in these segments, we are skipping a little bit over some of the detailed analysis because we have done so much of such detailed analysis and the nested interpretations in the last year in all of the 120 plus segments that we've done in the last year or two. So therefore now we're trying to move a little faster for those of you who are more experienced with how we function, with how we use the process, the method, the methodology. So the word tariqa is derived from taraqa. Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word in the Quran, it is consistently referring to the path or the method. And for example, 7216, We have seen this interpretation of this ayah specifically when we talked about al-jinn in the segments YT74, YT75, YT76, we've detailed all of this before. So we're relying on the fact that you're ac acquainted with what we've said before. The translation for this specific ayah, 7216, that we've provided before, and that had they persisted, it's talking about some people who rejected what the Quran brought. And had they persisted on their original correct path, on their original correct method, on the method that was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, Allah, would have quenched them abundantly with divine water, provided them with the divine guidance. And this is another theme that we've used many, many times before. The ma or the divine guidance that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is represented by quenching the believers who are seeking the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word tariqa is the correct path or the originally correct path. Remember, this is part of Surah Al-Jinn, and we described Al-Jinn. They're not special species of creatures that are separate from human beings. They're a kind of a human being who follow their Iblis, their predilections and biases, and who are totally immersed in being obedient to these predilections and biases. So therefore, these people don't follow a disciplined process, a disciplined method, that disciplined method or disciplined path is referred to as tariqa, tariqa. So we refer to it as the path or the method. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using consistently every word that's derived from the same root taraqa to mean the path. So therefore, tariq is the active participle. Tariq is the active participle from the same root, from the same root taraqa. And it indicates someone who establishes or takes up the path or the method or who follows it or who seeks it at least. So therefore, the translation we chose for this word is the path seeker or the path finder. Either way, it's acceptable. It means someone who follows or who establishes or who finds and invites to that path, etc., etc. That's another descriptor for Al-Mahdi, what they call Al-Mahdi, which we rejected that label. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never used that label in the Quran, Al-Mahdi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used Al-Muhtadi, those who seek, and therefore the path seeker or the path finder, because the methodology can be found. That's why we make the dua in the Fatiha every time we read Al-Fatiha, Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim, guide us to the methodology of self-correction. That's how we define the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Method, methodology is very, very similar in nature. There are some differences, but this is not the subject of this segment. All right, so Tariq is the path finder or the path seeker. I hope it's really clear. I hope no one of those who think they understand Arabic will want to impose their own interpretation from outside the Quran on this word. I've just given you the full interpretation based on the nested interpretation from within the Quran. We did not go outside the Quran. We referred specifically to how the Quran used that word. So now we have a new descriptor that fits very well with the subject of this series, which is about the so-called Al-Mahdi. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is referring to him as the pathfinder or the path seeker, depending how you want to interpret it. So it's very clear now, and by the pathfinder who commits to the prescribed method, as we saw in here. The next ayah, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَقْطَارِقْ Now, I want to stop here, and I want to say that we cannot understand the next ayah unless we link it with the ayah that follows it. And this is part of the divarication, tafsil, that we've talked about so many times before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a hint that the next ayah has been partly separated, even though it's part of the same sentence, because it's a very important separation. And we're going to analyze it and discuss it in full detail. So I hope you're patient. I hope you pay attention because this is really something we can learn a lot about in this divarication, in this tafsil. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَطَّارِقْ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ in the past, we have seen some interpretations of this style of expression, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ or وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ which occurs in the Quran about maybe 14, 15 times. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ they interpreted it as what has made you know or what has taught you. Well, this is not appropriate because Allah is the one who teaches everyone. So Allah does not ask a question about that. In the past, we have given an interpretation that this wow is wow al-qasam, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by the one who taught him, who taught Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But here we have a new interpretation that I'm sharing with you for the first time. A new interpretation based on the fact that there is tafsil between these two ayat. So let's take it very slowly, very carefully, so that we can internalize exactly what we're observing. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, وَمَا which means not. This is a negation instrument. So ma in here is a negation instrument. This is part of this tafsil. وَمَا adraka That means someone did not let you know. Someone did not let you know. Who is that someone? النَّجْمُ thaqib. This is why it's separated in here. مَا الطَّارِقْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this النَّجْمُ thaqib. we're going to see who that person is, did not let you know who or what is a tariq So now we have a new realization that this part of the sentence, which is the subject of the verb adraka, is separated into its own ayah. And we're going to see why. The reason this is done, as we have seen many times, is something called the distributive law. The distributive law says that sometimes there are two clauses in here. Wama adraka is one clause. Mattariq is another clause, so, and you were not informed about the pathfinder, Mattariq, 
These are two separate clauses. Both of them are related to an-najm thaqib So let's take it very slowly. So the first interpretation or the first meaning or indication says that the one who did not inform you about the pathfinder is the star that pierces. An-najm al-thaqib. We're going to see who that person is without any guesses. We're not going to guess. We're going to let the Quran tell us. We're going to follow the trail and allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal to us all of this information from within the Quran, again using the methodology, being patient, allowing the dhikra to happen, and then verifying and validating. And we're going to see this in full detail. So the first interpretation says, the one who is a najm thaqib did not let you know what or who is a tariq meaning who or what is the pathfinder. What is that saying? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this guy, and najm al-Thaqib, is playing a nasty role in not letting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa know about this very important person or concept, a tariq by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore in here. So this is the first indication. We stop here, we reflect. What is that saying? That's saying that a najm al-thaqib, remember in the prior episode, in the prior segment, YT128, in the same series, we figured out exactly with evidence that a najm is referring to Isa. Isa being the qareen, the famous qareen. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Muhammad, you have a famous qareen, he is a najm, and he's not letting you know the full knowledge that he has, which is, a tariq there is a tariq that's coming, a pathfinder. And that concept is not familiar to Muhammad وسلم, at the time when this ayah is revealed. So that's the first indication we receive. The second indication that we receive also because of the distributed law, the distributive law says that the second clause also applies to this sentence or this clause right here. So what does that mean? Well, it means Matariku and Najmu Thaqib. It is not a tariq and najm al thaqib. What does that mean? That means a najm al thaqib, the star that pierces or the piercing star, is not a tariq. So both indications are part of this structure, this really unique structure that the Quran uses to allow distributive law, the distributive law, which we've talked about many times before, that allows us to link multiple clauses to one other clause that's separated in the next ayah. I hope it's really clear. Again, those of you who have watched prior segments should find this very comfortable, very easy to understand. We're not saying something new. We have seen this many, many times before, and we've applied it many times before. So therefore, we have two indications. The first indication says that the star that pierces, the piercing star, did not let you get informed about At-Tariq, the pathfinder or the path seeker. The second interpretation, which is also valid because of this tafsil that we're, we're doing in here, is that a najm al thaqib is not a tariq, meaning a tariq that we're talking about in this surah is not a najm al thaqib. I hope it's really clear. Now, who is a najm al thaqib? As I show you in here, pierces, that means penetrates, that means go against a common norm or a common thread or a common theme that occurs in all other nujum. In the prior segment, YT128, we demonstrated beyond any shadow of the doubt that a najm refers to one specific messenger, one of the nujum, one of the stars, one of the sons, one of those who brought messages. So we demonstrated that was Isa. And Isa, in this case, the famous Qareen, has not allowed our beloved وسلم, to know about At-Tariq. If you want to understand what I'm talking about, you need to watch the series on Isa ibn Maryam. You can't understand this concept without going through the series on Isa ibn Maryam. Again, how do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the same An-Najm? Because An-Najm is a unique marker that's used exclusively throughout the Quran. If you trace it again using the methodology, you will establish a high level of confidence that this is the correct interpretation. Is that enough? No because there's verification in the next ayah that we're going to see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, An-Najm al-Thaqib, the subject of this verb, Adraka, he did not let you know about At-Tariq. 
That's the first indication. The second indication is that At-Tariq, the one we are swearing by in here, is not Al-Najm Al-Thaqib. Mat-Tariq Al-Najm Al-Thaqib. Those of you who know real Arabic, not fake Arabic, not traditional Arabic or Arabic 101, will understand what I just said. Mat-Tariq Al-Najm Al-Thaqib is a very legitimate Arabic sentence. It's Jumla Ismiya that starts with the negation instrument Ma. So, for example, in Arabic, I say, Ma Sa'idun Qadimun, meaning Sa'id is not coming. Ma Sa'idun Qadimun. It's a very legitimate sentence in Arabic. Ma Tariku An Najm Al Thaqib. He is not An Najm Al Thaqib. So, therefore, now we have two different characters being introduced in the first three ayat right here. So, An Najm Al Thaqib, the one who violates the norms of other messengers, meaning in this case, Isa ibn Maryam who is the Qareen of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we've seen this plenty before this sentence in here. So this should not be a surprise to those of you who have been very familiar with what we've seen before in this channel. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafid. This is ayah number four. There is no nafs, i.e. a person, but shall eventually have over it a guardian. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is referring to the guardian or the hafiz. Hafiz in the Quran, again, if you trace it, you find that it comes with two different possible meanings, both of them acceptable. Hafiz in the sense of protecting from doing something bad, and hafiz in the sense of preventing someone from doing something good. Both are part of the meanings in here. So why do we know this? Because as we've seen before again in the series on Isa, we saw a narration from our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that referred to the same concept, that every one of us has a qareen. So in here, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is telling our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember that every nafs has a qareen. A qareen is a hafiz, hafiz that could prevent you, or hafiz that could help you, an angel type of hafiz, or a shaitan type of hafiz. And we've seen this before. So this should not be a surprise to any of you, inshallah, if you've been regularly following this channel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming, and Najm al-Thaqib is one of those kinds that we're talking about in here, a hafiz. So is that enough? No, now we continue with ayah number five, and the concept develops even more clearly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ insanu mimma خُلِقْ Let him, who is him? The pathfinder in here, observe. Let him observe. So, فَلْيَنْظُرْ There is a colon in here. Two dots above each other. Colon. فَلْيَنْظُرْ this, this colon right here. The directly guidable man. Al-insan. Who is al-insan in here? It's the same as al-najm. So, now we have multiple corroborating references. All telling us the same thing. And again, we have seen this again and again in multiple, multiple segments before. So now, Al-Najm Al-Thaqib is referred to as Al-Insan in here. This directly guidable man, from what was he created? Who is supposed to do this investigation? Falyanzur. Who is he? At-Tariq. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is teaching us now, At-Tariq is the one who discovers that Al-Insan or Al-Najm Al-Thaqib or Isa Ibn Maryam, his true story, especially the reality, about his lineage, who was his father. So if you remember when we discussed the story of Isa ibn Maryam, we focused on Zakaria being his father, provably from the Quran. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, At-Tariq is the one who follows this path or finds this path, is the one who will ask this question, Al-Insan mimma khuliq, what was he created from? And the answer comes right here, we also provided more than 11 ayat in the Quran, giving us a similar answer. So this is not unique to this surah. There are no less than 10 other janah, 10 other corroborating evidences in the Quran on the same concept of the fatherhood of Isa. So therefore, the person who is invited to observe or to question or to think or to reflect about the fatherhood or who the father of Isa is, is this person At-Tariq, now it's really clear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this person they refer to as Al-Mahdi. We said that's not the right label. He is Al-Muhtadi, the seeker, the finder, the one who pursues knowledge and truth. 
So the answer is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we confirm that al-insan, every insan, not just this one, especially this one, was created from a flowing fluid. The directly guidable man was created from a flow, flowing fluid. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ That comes out from between those having intercourse with contemporaries. at taraib Again, we've talked about all of this before. None of this is new interpretation. I'm just offering it as a new way to see the same concepts repeat again and again. Remember when we talked about Surah an naba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to that declaration, an naba as the prevalent naba the ubiquitous naba the naba the declaration that's throughout the whole Quran, many, many places. And I told you, it's not just a dozen surah. It's almost every surah that talks about the same declaration, the same news, the news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be providing a new era, which we are in, phase three, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to see the secrets of the Quran, the revelation of the loads within the scripture of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is confirming the same concept. The fatherhood from which he was created comes out from a flowing fluid that comes out from between those having intercourse with contemporaries. at taraib the plural of tariba, part of the meaning is one of the contemporaries. And then the surah continues, surely he, Allah, is fully capable of returning him to the mission. Returning him to the mission using the word raj'ihi, from the root raja'a is used frequently in the Quran to mean something very specific. It's not a generic word. It's not a vanilla flavored word. We've seen it in Surah Yusuf. If we go to the notes down here, note number nine, and again, those of you who will have access to this file will see all of these details. The interpretation was established in verses or ayat 1246, 1250, 1281, among many others. So raja'a means to resume a mission, to come back, to pick up a mission, an original mission that was given to those who engaged the Quran. So this attariq comes back to resume the mission. Of course, the qareen is not coming back to resume the mission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about someone who has the freedom to resume the mission. The freedom to resume the mission is someone who's alive, not a qareen. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, he is capable of returning this person, At-Tariq, the path seeker or the pathfinder, to the mission. Which mission? Of engaging the Quran properly, of following the path, At-Tariqah. This is exactly all of these beautiful meanings coming together and linking to develop a very clear, very crystal clear understanding of all of these ayat. When does this happen? يَوْمَ تُبْلَى السَّرَائِرِ When the secret deeds are exposed. Which secret deeds? The secret deeds of what Isa did, this famous Qareen. And we saw this again in the series on Isa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us during phase three, which I keep saying we are in right now, we are living in historic times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming during this special time, Allah will reveal the secret deeds of the Qareen, of al Najm al Thaqib, the piercing star. I hope it's really clear. And then Allah continues, فَمَا لَهُ مِن قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ And then at that time, this person, the directly guidable man, the Qareen, Isa, has no power nor any helper. I know some of you are upset when I keep talking about Isa, but this is a reality. We need to accept the facts. We need to see that it's prevalent throughout the Quran. It's not only mentioned in a half a dozen ayat. It's mentioned in almost every surah. And that's why I keep repeating all of these corroborating evidences, because we need to accept these facts. This is a very important substrate for the phase in which we're living in, which is phase three, if we choose to adopt this evidence, if we choose to accept such evidence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it prevalent and called it al-Naba'ul Azim. It's very prevalent because we have no choice to reject. We have to keep toiling and understanding and cleansing and unlearning what we were taught, all the indoctrination of 1400 years of the dark ages, so that we can come back to the Quran and really understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing of the secret deeds. The secret deeds of whom? Of this person that we're talking about. The person that is the famous Qareen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts a new paragraph in here. 
ذات الرجع. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by the abstract understanding which is characterized by its returning. As-sama shall return again to provide the fluids, to provide the rain, the divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to provide the proper interpretation again. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by this, telling us how important it is. وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعَ And by the scripture, which is characterized by a surface layer that is caked over, but it may crack. And once it cracks, it allows the exposure of its inner loads. Just like we saw in Surah Az-Zalzala, Surah 99. And we've covered it at least a couple of times before. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَفْقَالَهَا And the scripture brings out its heavy loads. This is after the crack. الصَّدَعْ So the surface layer may crack to allow the exposure of the inner loads. Again, I hope you're noticing that none of these concepts that we're giving are just sitting by themselves in one or two ayah. They're prevalent. The concepts and the meanings and the aspects of this interpretation that we're sharing with you on this channel are prevalent. They, they repeat in many, many surah. So therefore, it cannot be a coincidence. It cannot be an anomaly that we just interpreted one ayah separate from the rest of the Quran. The whole Quran is screaming about these facts and these truths that we're sharing with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with this paragraph. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعَ وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعَ إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلٌ فَصْلٌ This declaration that I'm sharing with you throughout this whole surah so far, and this is ayah 13, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, the foretelling provided in this surah, the confirmation that phase 3 is coming, that at tariq shall come, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what his qareen hid from him. Remember that his qareen at one point in time, he was given the knowledge so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that he taught him al-kitab. So this qareen knew, but he hid certain information from our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all of these facts and then saying all of this stuff, all of this information I just shared with you, including the foretelling, remember, because this is a foretelling at the time when this surah was being made accessible to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was foretelling, it was a premonition was sort of future information. This future information provided in this surah is indeed a decisive declaration. Qawlum fasl. But not just that. The word fasl refers to tafsil. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a methodological hint in the same word. The word fasl means two things simultaneously. It means decisive, clear, true, confirming, assured, Everything, all of these meanings are part of the word fasl, but also divarication, tafsil, where you need to do the separation of the clauses and the distributive laws and reassignment of all of these meanings, as we saw in here in this ayat. All of this stuff that we've done in here. And فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ مَخُلِقُ I told you there is a colon after فَلْيَنظُرِ All of this fasl is confirmed by this word fasl in here. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in order to understand this surah you have to apply tafsil fasl. I hope it's really clear. Again we're not making any of this up. It's all in front of us. We just have to understand the concepts and apply them. It's like you're taking a mathematics course and then in the exercises the teacher puts some hints at the bottom. This is one of those hints. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us hints to understand the problem we're dealing with, which is to try to understand and interpret the surah and internalize its meanings, of course. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلِ And it is not made in jest. This is very serious stuff. This is something that will affect you long term. Don't take it lightly. إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming another fact. They, the deniers, currently plot a devious plot. And again, we saw this in the prior segments in this series, that there is a group of deniers, rejectors, hypocrites, who were working even at the time when our beloved ﷺ was still alive. They were plotting. And also we saw this in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the story of Al-Baqarah, refer to the segment about the she-cow. 
whatever they used to plot in the past, they still do. So the rejectors, the deniers, even the hypocrites are plotting. Currently, during the life of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes. Currently, during our life, yes. Both. This is a present tense. This is a present tense that means it's valid for the present and the future. They currently plot a devious plot. وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا But I, Allah, also plot a superior plot. Where is the superior plot? In the structure of the scripture. In the structure of the Quran. In telling us all of these facts and allowing us to extract them when he chose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed a tariq to come and to provide a path. And inshallah with this channel we're trying to do this. Remember this is not just one individual. This is a type of individuals as we saw in the prior segments in this series. So it's not just me. It is a number of people who are providing parts of this path. Inshallah we claim that we have the most complete method and methodology. But it doesn't mean we're exclusively providing this way of thinking about exclusively within the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us a tariq is a type of person, not just one single individual. So a tariq is not his name, it's a descriptor, just like al-muhtadi, the one seeking guidance, the one seeking the path, the pathfinder, etc. So the conclusion of this surah is very, very important. فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ Respite given to the rejectors, al-kafirin, and that's why we said the deniers or the rejectors are meant in this ayah right here. Amhilhum ruwaydan. The last word is really interesting. Now the question is ruwaydan. Where does it appear in other places in the Quran? The answer again in Surah Yusuf, and we saw this. Rawadathu allati huwa fi baytiha. Sanurawidu anhu aba. This rawada, this verb, is part of the same root as ruwaydan. So what does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this respite that we're giving to the rejectors, this delayed time that we're giving to the rejector, at a point they should be compelled to get out of this respite, to abandon the thought they had during this respite, during this period of waiting in dark ages as we saw. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa respite to the rejectors, but declare to them a compelling respite, meaning this respite is only a limited time period, which means the good news that the dark ages that we have suffered for the last 1200 to 1400 years is limited in time. And with this understanding of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, when you see a tariq interpreted correctly, just like a zalzala interpreted correctly, that's a signal for the end of these dark ages. That's a signal for phase three, which inshallah we are living in right now. So in conclusion, I want to leave you with one more corroboration from Surah An-Nahl, Surah number 16. Again, there are many notes in here, but I want to just focus on this word, An-Najm. The term An-Najm, which is used in 1616, to mean something very relevant to what we're talking about in here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us against using the teachings of the star in 1616. So let's look at the ayah. This is 1615. This is 1616. Let's start from the very end because that's usually the hint. As I told you, the exercise, usually at the bottom of the exercise, you're given a hint. The same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very often in the Quran, at the end of a surah or after a dhikr, after a story or a parable, sometimes he gives us a hint to help us out. For those who are patient enough to keep reading and thinking and reflecting and allow time to pass and not rush to judgment and speculation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a hint. أَفَمَنْ يَخْلُقُ كَمَنْ لَا يَخْلُقُ is the one who creates, similar to someone who does not create. So whom do we know throughout the Quran who is even given the verb يخلق or خلق? It's only Isa. Isa is referred to by this hint, the one who creates, just like the one who does not create. And in the series on Isa, we proved that he did not create anything. Allah was the creator all along. 
the language was such that it made some people confused to think that he created some birds out of clay molds, etc. But that was bogus, that was false, and we proved that linguistically. So I hope you refer back to that series. Again, I keep telling you, that series is really important to understand the series on Al-Mahdi. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, He did not create anything. Allah was the one who created. And therefore, this person that they say created is referred to in the prior ayah, an najm as we have proven in YT-128, the prior segment to this one. An najm idha hawa. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us some information about al-ard, and he, Allah, provided in the scripture anchoring principles. Rawasiya. We've talked about this before. Again, I don't need to keep reiterating all of these nested interpretations. I hope and I expect some people have done their homework and reviewed the prior segments so that we don't keep repeating things and keep the segments short. Rawasi are the anchoring principles that help us in the interpretation, in the methodology itself. Lest it sways with you. Lest it sways with you. Now, tamida bikum is another marking. Because in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Al-Ma'idah. And we define that term as an active participle, feminine, for something that sways, which refers to the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to Al-Ard, lest it sways with you. Meaning the Qur'an includes these principles. So that's another marking, another indirect marking to the fact that Isa is referred to as a Najm in here. Again, all of these cannot be coincidences. If you believe the Qur'an contains coincidences, then you're watching the wrong channel because coincidences belong to an imperfect being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a perfect being and therefore there are no coincidences. Everything is intentional. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting all of these markings in this ayah in here. Tamida bikum an najm yakhluku kaman la yakhluk. All of these references refer to the same person, Isa. Now, what are these ayat saying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the scripture anchoring principles, lest the ard or the scripture sways with you, meaning allows you to stay steady, to confirm that your understanding is correct. And this is the methodological basis for us to do the verification and validation. Look for these principles and apply them to whatever conjectures and hypotheses you come up with during the process of interpretation. And then the ayah continues. And interconnected rivers and pathways. Rivers and pathways because all of these ayat are connected. So Allah is giving us a metaphorical image that all of these links among the various ayat are like rivers of guidance. Rivers of confirming information. If you follow them, you can develop more certainty and confidence. Perchance you may see guidance and it continues. And markings. وَعَلَامَات وَعَلَامَات Allah puts in Al-Ard, in Al-Ard, in the scripture, Alamat. So what are the Alamat? Again, we have seen this before when we talked about Surah Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman, ayah number one, Allama Al-Quran. And we said this word or this verb, Allama, is a transitive verb. Usually when it means to teach, it requires two objects, not just one. So here Allah gave us just one object. That means it's a different meaning than to teach. Allama to place markings. So Allam al Quran, he placed markings in the Quran. Here we are. Wa alamatin, there are markings in Al Ard, in the scripture. Do you need more evidence that all of these concepts and all of these Abrahamic locution terms really make sense together to illuminate the Quran and to provide us the radiance with which this Quran is filled? If you are not following all of these details, that means you're not paying attention to all of the segments in this channel. Because we're covering them very diligently, very slowly, very carefully, trying to be as helpful as possible for people to learn. As you see, the Quran explains itself if you submit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming Al-Ard is the Quran. In it there are Rawasi anchoring principles, you should adopt these principles and use them for verification. And Anhar, link all of these ayat between the various surahs and Subulan, different ways to think and reflect, different evidences, bayinat, 
لعلكم تهتدون if you are really seeking guidance it's perfect it's all making perfect sense وعلامات الله سبحانه وتعالى also included in الأرض علامات these are the markings that we keep using and referring to now here's the surprising part وبالنجم هم يهتدون here Allah سبحانه وتعالى is talking to us أنتم تهتدون the people who are addressed who are reading the Quran and now هم they people who are not reading the Quran بالنجم هم يهتدون and they seek the guidance of an najm they seek the guidance of an najm so those who are outside the guidance described in the first ayah are looking for an najm to tell them the story about himself and to tell them his point of view this is exactly the foundation of phase 2 everything that we call the dark ages in the history of our muslim tradition Phase 3 allowed us to rise above these errors they made 1200, 1400 years ago. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing the radiance to come through the Quran. And now we see they have been following an najm. So were they following true Quran or were they following the made up stories brought through what's called the gospel or the Bible or whatever name you want to give it? That's for you to decide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, they follow a najm. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you seek these principles, you seek these interconnections between the various ayat and various surahs, you seek the ways that Allah described in the Quran, and you seek these markings. And if you do all of that, perchance you seek guidance. I hope it's really clear. The concepts are so well interconnected and so coherent it leaves us in awe of this beauty of the Qur'an. There is no way this Qur'an has been written by a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the inside of our way of cognition. And he's giving us all of this information in a way, in bite-sized information, so that we can really digest and appreciate and learn. And hopefully, we're doing the best we can to try to bring this information in bite-sized segments that are easy to understand and easy to accept. Please write in the comments. Let us know how we're doing, how well you're receiving this information. It means a lot when we receive comments from you. Also, for the YouTube algorithm, it helps us in the spreading and the propagation of this ilm so that millions and millions can, inshallah, get to see it. With this, we come to the closure of the segment. Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana lihada, wa ma kunna linahtadi alawla an hadana Allah. Laqad jaat rusulu rabbina bilhaq. Thank you so much for watching. Salamun alaikum.